Welcome to the Internet of Bugs. My name is Carl, and today we're going to talk about why it is that a code generation AI is never going to be able to take the job of a software engineer. Let's start off by talking about the world as they tell us it's going to be. So they tell us there's going to be a prompt engineer. That prompt engineer is going to tell the AI what the AI is supposed to code, and then that code is going to get spit out, and then it's going to get deployed, and it's going to be stuck on the system that actually the offering lives on. Okay, before we go there, let's talk about where we are now and if we're actually gonna to get to that world ever, how that might happen. What we'll do is we'll talk about the current state, which is the software engineer does what they say the AI is going to do. So the software engineer is the intelligence that currently generates the code that goes and gets deployed. And the product owner is the person that tells the software engineer what to do. So roughly the software engineer is equivalent to the AI and the product owner is equivalent to the prompt engineer. Big animal pictures, just, Go with it for now, okay? Except this isn't the whole organization, right? You've got more stuff. This is a very incomplete list of agile roles, right? You've got your stakeholders, you've got your scrum master, because we have to have a scrum master because everybody has to do scrum these days. That's a whole other problem, but we'll talk about that in a different video. You've got your integrators, which basically are the people under agile terminology. These are the people that are responsible for coordinating the output of your team with the output of other teams and make sure they all hook together. You've got the DevOps folks that support the software once it gets deployed. You've got the operations folks, which are cloud accounts and all that kind of stuff. You've got your UI design you've got your UX designers, you've got your subject matter experts, which less said about that, the better. And then you've got your QA, QC, your testers. And again, this is a very incomplete list of the roles that happen in a real company when you're actually in a software development department. This stakeholders thing is kind of fuzzy. So let's break that out. So among other things, you've got your executive sponsor and really the rest of the executives too. You've got your project management office, theoretically, compliance, legal, marketing, finance, budget. The number of times I've heard, hey, we need to change the software so that our cloud bill stops going up or our cloud bill goes down. I don't even want to talk about that. You've got other tribes. Um, so for those of you that haven't done the Spotify model, basically, well, it's complicated. You can look it up, but it's other groups in the company that are doing the same kind of thing that you do that kind of have a say in what you're doing because they want it all to be the same. You've got your business analysts, you've got your content strategy folks. And again, this is a very incomplete list, right? Problem is this isn't really what happens because most of those folks, right? So like the integrators, the DevOps folks, the operations folks, the product owner doesn't understand any of the stuff that they're saying. The product owner is supposed to understand what it is the product's supposed to be, but they might get involved in like UI, UX, maybe, but they don't get involved in DevOps. They don't want to know about that. They don't want to get involved in organizing Scrum stuff. They don't want to get involved in how this project integrates in a technical way with the other projects in the company. All those people end up talking to the software engineer, not the product owner. And then you realize that actually all the people in the top part of that list are capable of throwing requirements in. And sometimes those go to the product owner, but a lot of times they don't. And you get business analysts or content strategy people or marketing people that just open tickets that you're supposed to go and deal with. And that's life as a software engineer. This kind of thing happens all the time. And the product owner just isn't the kind of person that's going to be able to handle all of those requests because that's not their job. Their job is to focus on what the product is supposed to be and how users are going to use it, not all the technical details of how the thing is supposed to work. So I'll tell you what, what we'll do is we'll pull the product owner out and we won't make the product owner the prompt engineer. We'll make the prompt engineer a separate person. So we've got the product owner, the product owner is going to talk to the prompt engineer. Everybody else is going to talk to the prompt engineer. And the prompt engineer is going to talk to the AI code generator. And the AI code generator is going to generate the stuff that goes into the system. Thing is, a prompt engineer doesn't know about how the integration with the software is going to work with all the other integration stuff. Um, they're you know, understanding how to tell an AI what to do is not the kind of thing where you understand what the performance of the system is necessarily going to be. Once the code gets generated, if the code is slow and we need to reduce the cloud costs, we're going to have to go tune that by hand. The AI may or may not be able to do that. And if it does, it's going to need very specific instructions about how to do that, that a prompt engineer may or may not understand because they may or may not understand like the algorithms involved. So a lot of what's happening here is software engineering, figuring out how to make the thing run faster, figuring out how to integrate your technical part of the offering with the rest of the offering with the other teams. That stuff is what software engineering really is in a big company. So now you've got the software engineer whose job basically is to handle all of these requests from everybody. You've got a prompt engineer that's talking to the AI code and you've got your offering system. Now, when you think about the fact that the vast majority of what's happening here is the software engineering part, right? 
It's dealing with finance. It's dealing with the scrum master. It's dealing with operations. It's deciding how are we going to make this cheaper? How are we going to make this faster? How are we going to make this scale? That's all software engineering stuff. And so all we really need to do is teach the software engineer how to do prompt engineering. And then we're back to this. So now AI is basically just another tool that the software engineer uses. See, the hard part of software engineering is not the code writing. The hard part of software engineering is balancing all of the business requirements with all the technical requirements, with all the finance requirements, and figuring out what it is that we need to build in order to be able to get all of those requirements satisfied. Those are really tricky problems, but those problems are all about the people. If the product owner was capable of taking all of that information and synthesizing all of it and just telling you, okay, this is what we need to get built and this is how it needs to get built. And you don't need to talk to anybody else in the organization. We wouldn't need Agile and we wouldn't need project management and we wouldn't need project management offices, but we need all of that. And even with all of that, the quality of software is still arguably abysmal. Um, it's certainly not getting any better and it's apparently getting worse or at least by some measures, it's objectively getting worse. So here's the thing. It doesn't matter how much better the AI gets. As long as the people are the limiting factor, and as long as the people don't get that much smarter, then the AI isn't going to be able to help. Now, there are a couple of things that might happen. One is that we might get some kind of a brain implant thing or brain uploading thing that lets all of those requirements get balanced without having to do all of the communication, which is the thing that takes all the time. It's also possible that maybe the AI is going to get so smart that it's smarter than us and it knows what we want better than we do. But if either of those things happen, we're not going to be bothering with Python code anymore. It's not going to be the AI is going to spit out code and then the code's going to get deployed. The AI is just going to do stuff. And there's not going to need to be this intermediate step of, okay, we're going to generate this code and then someone's going to have to go stick that on a server. So failing something completely revolutionary that makes code generation irrelevant, it's just not the case and will never be the case that an AI code generator is going to do the job of a software engineer because the job of a software engineer is more about people than it is about code.